Welcome, and I'm walking here through a Brito Mart, which is a shopping street in Auckland, in New Zealand. And I want to show you one interesting little test today. And I am here to test out the LG G7. What? The LG G7, a two-year-old device? Yes, because it got Android 10. And I want to test out how does the camera compare to the Android 9 version. Uh, but more likely, how can I use Google Cam on this bad boy? And what can it do? So in comparison to the normal native camera system. So I have instructions in the comment section if you want to know which APK I used for installing Google Cam, which works pretty nicely on this uh, on this uh, device. And uh, also some settings I will show you later that I set up to make Google Cam usable. But uh, we should, I think, walk a bit around and enjoy the view here. And uh, I take some photos of uh, Brighter Mart so we can have a look and compare the native LG camera app on LG um, Android 10 UX9 and Google Cam. So let's go. We first start with this photo of a flower. And you can immediately see the left Gcam photo has much more contrast that define the whole flower a lot more. The LG Cam creates a very blunt image here with lower contrast and no popping out of the flower itself. If we zoom in, we can see a slightly busier background blur on the LG Cam in contrast to the G-Cam that has a nice smooth background blur. In the next photo we can see a G-Cam issue with the LG G7. The whole photo gets a bit of a red tint, whereas the LG Cam image is a lot cooler and bluer with a slight greenish tint. I'm not sure what's going on here with the G-Cam, but the rest of the photos keep having this reddish tint to it you can easily correct this in post by subtracting the intensity of the red color, but nevertheless that should not be the case. So in the following photos I retouch the Gcam photo and change the red channel from 255 to 222 to make things not appear too red. What we can see in general with the Gcam is a much nicer preserving of details and better contrast. Some might say the color look a bit boosted, but when it comes to dark colors, like the parking sign here, the black was really that black and not as bright as the LG Cam made it look like. When we take a look at the sorry sign, we can see another phenomenon compression artifacts of some sorts when you look at the lighter and darker parts at the end of the word Brightomart on the LG Cam site. You can only see it at 100% view, nevertheless it becomes quite obvious that the compression rate is higher on the LG Cam. You can see this effect more clearly with the hanging lights here. It seems a bit like an abstract painting on the right, on the left with the Gcam it's not perfectly in focus, but at least it does not show such effect here. Talking about focus, on closer look at this photo we can see the Gcam nailed the focus on the center of the flower where the LG Cam misses it. If I tap to focus I can nail the shot on the LG Cam as well, but the tapped to focus Gcam again shows a sharper image with a bit more of structure in the leaves as well. Taking a look at the center of the next photo, we can see that the LG Cam uses a bit more aggressive sharpening filter, which creates this really unpleasant artificial sharpening look. Gcam is not completely free from it, but it looks way more natural.
so this is now a recording test with the LG G7 and the Gcam mod for it and uh, the front facing camera which doesn't have any autofocus as you can see here and uh, this uh, is also the stabilization test I wonder if it is stable enough for uh, vlogging and uh, sharp enough for vlogging uh, again the uh, Gcam mod only supports 1080p on the LG G7 which is a bit unfortunate because the device itself can support up to 4K 30 frames I think on the front cam and uh, 4K 60 frames on the back cam and you will see some examples that I will show you as well and uh, yeah how does it handle exposure I think it's a bit too bright I'm not sure the Google cam is not known for having good video and uh, let's compare it to the LG software So this is now the front-facing video of the LG software with the G7 and how does it handle the exposure here? It is set to 1080p as well to make it fair otherwise it would be a bit unfair if I would switch it to 4K on uh, this. So if you want to compare it to the Gcam mod I think this is the best setting uh, to compare it to and I think it handles a bit the brightness changes better so my face is better exposed in this video and uh, yeah you can write in the comments what do you think about uh, this comparison in terms of video uh, my personal opinion is from the first look here that the LG software the LG camera software is a bit better when it comes to um, video uh, performance I start with the LG camera and we see how the uh, back facing video works on the back facing camera and uh, it has of course the advantage it has an ultra wide that you can use on the LG cam that you cannot use on the Google camera which is I think a bit of a disadvantage sometimes also for taking photos that you don't have the option to take uh, the very good ultra wide uh, camera here on the LG so this is now the ultra wide angle video on the LG software and you can see clearly I'm totally wide you can see the background the only problem with the wide angle um, why I'm not using it so often is that it doesn't have autofocus in contrast to my uh, Huawei smartphones with wide angles like the P30 the Mate XS or the Mate 30 Pro that have autofocus on the wide angle which is sometimes handy if you want to point and point at something and show it in a bit more of a detail uh, also for close-ups of course it is way better than a fixed focus lens like here on the LG currently now we are looking at the only camera accessible on the back of the Gcam mod for the LG G7 and uh, yeah how is the stabilization here how is it when i'm walking and the sun is in the background probably my face is totally not exposed so let's do it like this how's the quality Ooh, it's starting to rain here uh, how is the quality so sunshine and rain is also very very interesting you can see there are dark clouds in the background uh, i don't have the ultra wide angle so it is a bit of a uh, problem is it a problem with the LG running around in the rain? Not really, because it is waterproof. Uh, IP68, I think, or 65 waterproof and resistance. And uh, so it wouldn't be a big of a problem uh, when it comes to the rain here. So now it's time that I show you where I got the G Cam, because there are many different G Cam mods available for the LG G7. But I thought this one is one of the yeah, few that works the best. So I got it from the website GTechB, which has a nice article about various different um, Google cameras for LG phones. And uh, they have a download link here. And here you can download the um, Gcam for LG G7. And this is what I did. So I downloaded this APK and installed this APK. And let me go back here. I'm recording this, by the way, on the LG G7 with Android 10 with the inbuilt recorder 
here. So some asked me the question if it has an inbuilt recorder. As you can see, it has one. So let's open up the Gcam. And this is how you probably will not be greeted by the Gcam. So let me go into more and then settings and I tell you about what changes I did. So first of all, re-init a camera session. You have to enable this. Otherwise, if you switch between modes like the uh, photo mode to video mode or the panorama mode, the cam will crash. And the same could happen when you uh, take multiple shots after another, it could crash. So enable the re-init camera session. The next thing that I did is enable Google Photo. Uh, it requires a reboot, so in this reboot, in this case, means you have to close the application and uh, start the application again. You can do this from the multitasking view, so let me close it and then we start it again. And this is how you basically do it. And uh, the reason why I enabled it, otherwise you will get um, an inbuilt viewer that will always show like uh, pro processing HDR or something like this and you're not able to zoom into your photo to check if you need the focus or something like this. So this is why I uh, had um, enabled a Google Photo here uh, which will go into Google Photo then will open up the image. Sometimes it will throw you out of the image and back into the gallery again but then uh, a few seconds later the photo will appear there. You can click on it and you can then zoom in and check your focus and so on. So this is an um, important thing. Then the next thing is uh, for some reason the back camera video res resolution was set to 720p which is uh, not very useful so I set it to 1080p. It's sad that you cannot set 4k here for some reason but 1080p is fine as well. And uh, then under advanced we have some other settings here that we can set and especially as I was um, showing you the red tin problem, if I would have enabled RAW plus JPEG here, I wouldn't have that much of a problem editing the RAW file even and um, simply created a, creating a rule to make it even better in terms of um, uh, yeah, problems. And the same goes for dynamic range and so on. So if you enable a RAW mod here, you have the full potential of editing your file. And uh, then, of course, you have some other settings here as well. The only thing that I changed, because the white balance with the default uh, system one is way, way, way more off than the Google one. So the Google one has a slightly red tint to it, but it's still usable sometimes occasionally. But the system one has always like a even more red or violet or reddish like a tint to it which is like I have an example photo here it's even worse I would say and totally unusable in this case. What I found out later on this is not the best Gcam that I tried out apparently this is just the newest version I tried out or at least the one that works somehow as fluent as possible but there's another Gcam version available as well and I did not test this here in this videos, but uh, it is available as well. And uh, I can recommend you trying it out and see what is the best for you. So if you go here, there is the uh, FU24 version of Gcam, which is an older Gcam version 6.1. And here you have to download the uh, Android 10 version of uh, this um, Gcam. And not only the Gcam itself, but also configs for this version. And if I go here in configs for this version, you can see you have uh, different configuration files for different phones. And if I click on the LG G7 Thank You here, we have different color profiles as well. One is the natural colors one, which I recommend, though the colors are a little bit blunter than with the uh, other Gcam that I tested. Then there are some others that I did not test right now, but the big benefit of this Gcam version is that you have access to the wide angle um, uh, camera as well on the LG G7 if you choose the natural colors at least and the uh, white uh, working uh, XML file here you have the benefit of using the wide angle camera as well with the Gcam. So this is also I think pretty handy. I will maybe create a test on this Gcam version as well and there will be a part two where I will test this uh, version out. Anyway, this are, these are the settings and these are the different versions I tried out. 
this uh, version that I used for my videos that are coming right now is this version here, which is version 6.2 and uh, for the Mi 9 SE V4. This is the version that I installed here and tested out on the LG G7. So this is the end of this uh, vlog and test a review of the LG uh, G7 with the Gcam mount and the LG camera comparison. Hope you still hear me here despite the uh, truck uh, running down the street. Um, yeah, this is the end. If you have questions, if you have comments, what which images, which photos you think are better, then uh, write them in the comment section. And uh, that's everything for this uh, video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and until the next time. Bye.